change of topics, I guess. Um, so we have a distinguished paper uh, that is going to be presented by Mevin on Martin Löw à la coque. Uh, yes, so this is going to be quite a change in, in, uh, in topic, kind of getting more on the foundational side of things. Um, so this is uh, work that's going in the direction of obtaining uh, mechanized metatheoretic results of the kind of foundations that we use for our proof assistance. And in this specific case for a multi type theory, which is kind of your uh, typical vanilla dependent type theory. Uh, and, and really what we want to go towards here is obtaining uh, certified type checkers. So really obtaining a kind of a, a good things that we can, that we can run at the end of the day. Um, and so for the, for the context, I guess most of you here are familiar with the, the Brian architecture, this idea that you are interacting with a big proof assistant, doing a lot of complicated things, uh, but then that, that proof assistant is offloading the proof checking to this very small kernel, and that's the only part that you really have to trust uh, when the proof assistant says, yes, you, you have found a proof. Uh, and this is a very uh, old idea, uh, and this is also a perfect target for certification, because we have this, this small um, kind of cru critical part, which is uh, well contained, well defined, and has a clear uh, semantics as well. What we, uh, the, the specification is, is uh, very clear. And so this is a very prime target for, for certification effort, especially since we're using proof assistance in so many contexts these days. Um, the thing is, if your kernel implements some uh, dependent type theory, then to be able to, to do that, that uh, work, you'll, you'll need a significant amount of meta-theoretical properties of your, of your uh, type theory before you're able to do that. Uh, and kind of the, the big player in this game these days is the Metacock uh, project. So basically trying to formalize the type theory of Coq inside of Coq itself. The type theory is called uh, PQuick. It's not exactly all that's in Coq yet, but it's pretty close to that. Um, and it really goes quite a long way, for, uh, provides this certified executable implementation, you can extract to OCaml, it even goes uh, further and certifies also the extraction process that takes the function inside of Coq and gives you this, this OCaml program. So it's a very complete uh, project. The problem is that there is some kind of a meta-theoretic gap in the middle there. Uh, basically, Metacoq does not try and prove this normalization property, which is kind of the, the maybe one of the hardest things you can, you can ask in a dependent type systems. Uh, and the reason for this, uh, I mean, part of the, of the obstruction has to do with like Godel's second incompleteness theorem. You cannot, uh, because normalization implies consistency, you cannot prove normalization of a system inside the system itself. Uh, but still, a lot of the very subtle points of, of Koch have to do with ensuring normalization. So it's kind of a pity that we're kind of turning a blind eye on all these, these subtle points. Um, so, kind of, uh, one of our goals was to try and, and, and uh, have things uh, making, uh, like looking at normalization a bit harder than, than what Metacock is doing. Uh, and our second important uh, data point there is, a, is a, a paper that was originally written by Andres Abel and Carthers uh, at Popple a few years ago, and that has been extended uh, by many uh, other authors, authors since, uh, which looks at smart enough type theories of kind of a much more a uh, Spartan type theory, a much uh, kind of simpler system, but which still features most of the difficult aspects of dependent type theories. Um, and here they prove uh, normalization in an axiom-free way, and they go a little bit further, they provide a statement of decidability of type uh, of conversion. However, because um, AGDA doesn't really support separation between proofs and types, uh, and uh, you, you can't really uh, run that thing on any uh, sizable example. So it's a kind of an abstract statement of decidability, but it's not really a, a program that you can run and obtain things with at the end of the day. Uh, and so our kind of sits in between these two things. We're kind of building on the, on the, the uh, Abel formalization. Uh, that's kind of uh, where a lot of our uh, base ideas come from there, but we're kind of extending a little bit the type theory uh, and also really p uh, get, giving some love to this, this idea of obtaining a, something that you can run. Uh, and hopefully, I mean, this is kind of a preliminary thing, but hopefully uh, later on we'll be able to go further in the, in the PQIC direction and maybe close, not all of the gap, of course, because of Gödel, but most of the gap uh, with, with, uh, with uh, PQIC. Okay, and so before I can tell you about what we've done, I need to tell you a little bit about what's happening in the AGDA uh, formalization, because kind of the core ideas are, are very similar. 
Um, and so the, the, the basis they've been working with is uh, probably something you're, you're familiar with, maybe not. So um, this, this uh, Martin of theory, maybe more uh, better um, a Martin of logical form, is kind of a big families of, of uh, dependent type theories. Um, and they all share these, these four main judgments. Uh, so you have the, the, the typing judgment here, uh, the one you're probably most familiar with. You, have, you are also able to say that a, a type is, is well formed. And then you have these two conversion judgments, which uh, identify things that should be uh, um, um, well identified from the point of view of the of the type system. Uh, and actually, these are kind of the, the nastiest parts of the, of these of these um, dependent type theory is what you exactly put in the in the conversion relation. That's kind of the hard bit here. Uh, and so conversion really is uh, so it's, a, an, it's an equivalence relation, reflexive, symmetric, transitive. And then whenever you extend your type theory with, with extra uh, type formers, you have a lot of them, dependent functions, uh, dependent uh, pairs, uh, diff different forms of inductive types, uh, universes, so type for types, and so on and so forth. You're also going to extend your conversion relation, and you have three kind of typical kind of, of rules you want to put in there. The congruence rule is not very interesting, like here for, for uh, application. Uh, then you have uh, beta rules, some, some rules that you want to think of as, as computation. Here, for instance, from the uh, lambda calculus, uh, that, that uh, we, we kind of, uh, the kind of more standard one. And then you also have these extensionality rules, for instance, the eta rule for lambda calculus, which you don't really want to think as a computation rule, but it's also an equation that's quite interesting to have around for both practical and theoretical purposes. Um, and the problem with this way of presenting conversion, it's very nice to put on paper and to show to users, um, but uh, it, it, it is kind of uh, difficult to work with it uh, because derivations are not unique and one of the big culprit is this transitivity relation. If you, you see you, this you kind of coming out of thin air, uh, that's a very bad thing. It's not something, a rule that you can implement like this because you cannot just guess you uh, at, at random. Um, and also, when you want to establish metatheoretic properties of the system in general, uh, this, this presentation is kind of, of cumbersome. Um, so what you want to do there is you want to relate this, this declarative presentation with this arbitrary mixing of all the nice steps that we want to do uh, with a second presentation, a much more uh, algorithmic one, uh, which is going to be directly implementable. Uh, so this is still kind of an inductively defined predicate, but one that will directly translate to an algorithm in a way that's kind of straightforward. And typically these things are going to be directed by the terms or by the types. Uh, and how they typically work is you do some amount of reduction, so some well-chosen subset of your beta rules. Then you try and apply extensionality rules against in a in, in well-chosen way, and also well-chosen congruences, again, kind of a subset of all the ones that you have around in a way that's well-structured. So that's the thing can be directly implemented. And so of course the question, and, and, and these things, they're directly implementable, they also have much better, it's much easier to prove a certain properties on this side of the, of, the, um, of the story than on the declarative one. So the, the goal here is we want to relate these two kinds of presentation to obtain these, these meta-theoretic properties and, and obtain a decidability result for the declarative system, which is the one that we want to present um, to users. And in one direction, it's not too hard going from the algorithmic to the declarative side, basically because the algorithmic system is really kind of a restriction of the declarative one. You just have selected certain rules in certain places, but all of them are easily admissible in the, in the declarative system, so that direction is not too tough. The interesting one is the other one, where you really want to show that if you have any of this declarative uh, de uh, derivation, you can kind of uh, massage it and transform it and restructure it so that you obtain, at the end of the day, one of these algorithmic derivation. So in a way, you can think of this as some sort of normalization process that will give you canonical representatives of certain judgments. Uh, canonical yeah, uh, derivation for, for the same judgment. Uh, and this part is much harder because this, this uh, transformation can be very complex. And the tool of choice to do these kind of things are uh, logical relations, these, these reducibility relation, uh, the idea is that you're going to introduce one of these reducibility predicates for each of the four judgments that I had at the beginning, one for types, for terms, and so on. Uh, and so the first one you introduce is this reducibility predicate for, for types, which is going to characterize uh, types by, by what the weak head normal form looks like. So for instance, if you have a type that reduces to nat the type of natural numbers, then it is going to be reducible uh, as nat. And then by 
induction on such a proof that a type is reducible, you are going to obtain the three other predicates. So for instance, a term is going to be reducible at a type A rel relatively to such a proof that A itself is reducible. And so if you go further with this example uh, at NAT, for instance, the things that are going to be reducible at NAT are the terms that uh, evaluate to zero, or those that evaluate to the successor of, an, uh, of something which itself is reducible. Um, and we also ha have to add a third case to handle uh, open terms. So if the, this, type, this term reduces to a neutral, so something, think a variable or any term that is stuck because of a variable, so a variable applied to an argument, for instance, that cannot uh, evaluate further because we're in an open context, and that neutral is related with several this, this uh, funny neutral comparison relation, then also the term is going to be reducible. Um, and the, the thing here, the caveat here, is that you don't see it for NAT, but as soon as you have types that can contain binders, actually you want to define these things mutually. So basically the, the uh, type reducibility predicate will need to mention the term reducibility predicate as well. And so this means that you, you need to rely on this induction recursion principle, which lets you define these kind of, of mutual um, inductive type and recursively defined function together. Um, and that's a principle that's available in ACTA, but not in Cox. We have to do something there to port the, the development. And it's also a principle that from the logical point of view is very powerful. Uh, so there's kind, kind of a big gap when you start doing this between the object theory you're looking at, the, which is kind of the vanilla margin of the theory, and the meta theory which now has these inductive recursive universes and it's uh, kind of quite more complicated. Um, so there's this uh, something to be done here and that, that we've worked with. Um, and the last um, important aspect of the, of the actor formalization is this idea of uh, generic typing here in the middle. The idea is that you're going to build this logical relation not with respect to the declarative or the algorithmic judgment, but you're going to find some, some kind of common interface, this generic judgment, with respect to which you are going to build the logical relation. And that means you only need to prove one, so this, this is the fundamental lemma of the logical relation showing that typing implies the logical relation. Uh, you only need to prove one of these fundamental lemma, and then you can kind of use it, use the logical relation twice to obtain properties first of the declarative uh, system, and then of the algorithmic one, and this saves us a lot of work because this fundamental lemma is really uh, quite a, a lot of, of energy spent, so we better do it only once and not have two logical relations. Okay, so that's mostly what's happening in the, in the uh, ACDA formalization, at least uh, what I want to, to build on uh, in, in the rest of the talk now, I can tell you a bit more about what, what we've done. Um, so the, the kind of the core uh, idea uh, is still pretty much the same as, as, the, as the one from, from ACDA, but there's a bunch of uh, extensions that, that we've done while doing the, the, the transformation. So of course we've ported the thing to Cox, so that's kind of new, but not maybe so interesting. We also have extra uh, type formers, so the original formalization only had natural numbers as inductive types. And we are able to handle equality types, we have lists, W types are on their way as well, so kind of trying to tackle all of the difficult features that you can see in, in uh, inductive types in, in typical dependent type systems. And I'm not going to tell you too much about this because it's not that interesting. I think the, the interesting things are, are these ones. So uh, how we tackle this induction recursion problem using this uh, small induction recursion technique. Um, some insights coming from uh, bidirectional typing and having a bidirectional understanding of these algorithmic judgments. Uh, how we obtain this executable uh, checker, and not just a conversion checker, but also a type checker, which also fits uh, in this idea, in this bidirectional idea, because our type checker is going to be a bidirectional one. Um, and then also some maybe proof engineering lessons, say, that might be of, of interest to other people formalizing these, these kind of, of things. Um, okay, so that's kind of the plan for the rest of, of the talk. And so I can start with, with small induction recursion. Uh, that's a technique that has been described on, on paper with us in this paper by Hancock and, and co-authors, um, which is a way kind of to encode away uh, induction recursion. So here you have a, an example of kind of the typical thing we want to do with, with um, uh, inductive uh, recursive types. This is Agda code because again, it's not available in Coq. But the idea is that you want to mutually define this uh, inductive data type U and the EL function that uh, goes out of you. And you see this is mutual because here in the second constructor, you, you uh, mention EL while you're defining you. So this is really mutual, um, mutually defined. 
Um, and the idea of small induction recursion is that uh, what you're going to do instead is you, you are inductively defining the image of the, of the function as some sort of inductive predicate here on the codomain of the function. So for instance, bool is going to satisfy this predicate because here uh, you, have, you have a case that, that decodes to bool. And then uh, from this inductively defined uh, predicates, you can kind of repackage thing and obtain again U and EL uh, and, and kind of smart constructors that have most of what we want uh, from, from the original inductive recursive definition. There's some need to re-encapsulate thing, reprove a, um, an induction principle that suits us and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we're able to do this. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that this typically raises the universe levels. If you know about Agda, you know about this set one, which is kind of a one, uh, the, the, the kind of second universe uh, set is the smallest one, and set one uh, is, is the next one. Uh, and this is not very surprising, because as I said, induction recursion has this very strong logical power, um, and universes are a way of obtaining stronger power. So this idea is that instead of, of having this completely new principle, um, you, you encode it away and you kind of reduce the logical power to just having one or a few extra universes and index inductive types, which are a very standard feature of your proof assistant. So from the logical point of view, it's also really reducing the, the logical power of the meta theory to be very close to the one of the object theory. So that's also quite satisfying. Um, and I'm not going to tell you in detail how we do it in the, in the cock formalization, but basically this is like the logical relation we define, and it's kind of the scaling up this, this technique with a bunch of bells and, and whistle, but the core idea really is this small induction recursion technique. Okay, the, the second aspect uh, where, where I think we've, we've uh, understood uh, a few things is uh, really kind of making clear these, these bidirectional insights. They were somehow implicit, I think, in the original uh, AGDA work, uh, but it's, uh, I think, quite clear. I mean, we, we've really worked on making them explicit and clear and, and really using this, this, uh, these ideas uh, in an explicit way. And the idea is that this, this algorithmic um, conversion judgment, uh, if you want to think it from the bidirectional point of view, it's uh, somehow checking, So, which, which I write with this, this, uh, this uh, triangle here. Uh, the idea is that it takes the type as an input, uh, as, as in actual information that you want to use to compare the terms. And, and how it works is that you first reduce both the terms you compare and their type, all of them to weak at normal form, and then you try to apply either an extension analytic rule, if you can, if the type allows it, so for instance, your eta expansion of the two functions. Uh, if the type doesn't support it, but you can, uh, you can apply a congruence rule for the constructors here for natural numbers, for instance, you do that as well. And if none of this works, uh, because your two terms are neutral terms, so again, these, these stuck forms, then you are going to call this second relation, this neutral comparison relation. An important thing here is that this neutral comparison relation is inferring. So while it is comparing the two neutrals, it is also going to uh, find, uh, infer a, a type that is common for the two things. And the reason you want to do this is here in this uh, neutral application case, you want to compare the arguments at a given type A, but you need to get that type A from somewhere. And the place you get that type is while comparing the two functions, you are also going to infer the common type, evaluate that type, and then you obtain the domain here that you can use in this, in this recursive call. Um, and so you have this kind of very typical bidirectional aspect of things. You have these two mutually defined judgments that interplay with each other and the, all the ideas of also invariant preservation, making things, uh, maintaining that the context is always well formed, things like that that are typical from bidirectional typing, will apply equally well here also to algorithmic conversion. Um, and conversely, the whole story I told you uh, earlier about these generic judgments, so kind of factoring the work uh, in the logical relation by having just this one interface that you instantiate twice, also works for typing judgments. So we also have this declarative typing which is just uh, not bidirectional, and the algorithmic typing, which is bidirectional, and we are able to also play this generic judgment thing and, and the factor that logical relation plays equally well there. Uh, and this was also very nice because you can really kind of extend the whole story and really have this one uh, work factor that um, in, in the logical relation. And the other interesting thing that we had to think about is uh, how to translate the bidirectional disciplines. So if you look at, at bidirectional type systems, especially for dependent type systems, you have um, um, typical um, like invariant preservation through the bidirectional uh, algorithms. Typically, you always maintain the information that the context is a well-formed one, but you never recheck it fully. 
uh, and that's very important to set up these algorithms in a way that is well behaved. Um, and we actually had to translate these ideas into custom induction principles, what we call these, these bundled induction principles. Um, and the idea is the following one. If you want to show something by induction on this premise here that a certain type is checking, you want to show this property P, but you are also a, uh, able to assume the extra uh, thing that the context and the type is well-formed, which are the kind of algorithmic premises of your type checking judgment, then in each of your induction steps, you will have extra help in the form of typically, uh, for instance, context well formation assumptions that really come from this idea that you will have preserved this context well formation information. And so for each of the, if your uh, induction step, you will have this information available. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and these are really needed because basically the, the raw algorithmic judgments are not very well behaved. We really need this invariant information to be able to get somewhere. Um, and so these, these uh, bundled uh, principles are very necessary for us. Um, and the last, the last kind of uh, innovation here is obtaining these, these uh, executable things. We're using a combination of the equations uh, plugin for Coq and a new library by Theo Winter. I don't know if he's around, but he, he was around yesterday, so he's probably somewhere in the corridors, uh, which uh, builds on ideas by Connor McBride on using a free monad to do uh, open recursion. And the reason for this is that the conversion checker is non-structurally recursive. So we have to do some, some fancier things to be able to express the definition in a type theory like that only allows terminating things. Um, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what the technique is doing, but rather what kind of the shopping list is of all the things we, we have or we want to have from such uh, libraries for non-structural recursion. Uh, so one important thing for us is to be able to separate the definition of the functions from their proof of soundness and of termination. And the reason of this is that uh, if you do that and you're able to execute your functions in some sort of set-indexed way or fueled way, then you get proofs by reflection. Because you, if you prove soundness, you evaluate your thing, get a result, then you can uh, get typing uh, results for free. And that's quite nice, especially to run like some simple examples and things like that. Uh, that's that's pretty, pretty nice. Also, of course, you want to be able to extract the thing and get something that runs after extraction. It's kind of the counter part of it. Um, and to be able to uh, do these soundness and termination proofs, you want to be able to do functional induction. So in, in, an induction principle that follows the structure of your recursive function, because otherwise you don't get anywhere near uh, a result there. And finally, uh, we also have more like maybe PL concerns. So you want modularity because you want to have like a, a typing um, algorithm that can call different maybe conversion routine that all call reduction machine. So you want to have this modular aspect of things. And also type checkers and conversion checkers are very naturally written in the error monad. So we want also support for the for monadic code here. Uh, and we have most of these, we haven't paid too much love to extraction yet, sadly, but uh, I don't think it's a very deep problem. It just needs to sit down and, and work on it for maybe a few days. Uh, the, the other aspects are pretty okay. We probably could make things a little bit nicer on the modularity and monadic aspect, but uh, we already have, have uh, some, some things there. So I'm quite happy about, about this, this, uh, this uh, Koch Barshelton um, project. Okay, and the last thing is this kind of engineering uh, thing. Yeah, um, so we're building on a bunch of work by others, this Koch Barshelton thing, we're using the AutoSubs2 plugin. Uh, for, for syntax with binder and, and substitution calculus and so on, which is quite quite handy, although there's still some friction left. So well, induction and recursion, it works at scale, although it's a bit painful, but maybe others can, and can take lessons from what we've done. And we're not very good at automation. We have some of it, but uh, a lot of things are very manual, so there's probably a lot of potential for automation there. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in any of these things, please talk to me or talk to, uh, to us. We'd be very interested in, in uh, interacting on, on these things. And so yeah, that's, that's mostly it. Uh, I think we're, we're quite happy about what we've got. We think it's a kind of nice formalization, but really it should be more thought of as some sort of, of beginning, right? I mean, Martin of theory is kind of a lame thing. It's kind of the baseline of a lot of dependent type systems. So really this idea that this could serve as some kind of sandbox for further experimentation with meta theory, extending both the, the, the language with more interesting features, maybe also testing new proof techniques uh, where, where a lot of things already ha are, are set up so you don't need to set everything up from the ground. Uh, and also it's, I think, kind of a nice uh, balance for the proof engineers. It's uh, a, good, a good place to test uh, new ideas, 
because I think the formalization is large enough to see a lot of issues that happen, for instance, these uh, techniques for um, uh, non-structural recursion, if you test it in two small examples, you don't see a lot of the issues and of the things that I've said about, so we need to have something that's a bit more sizable. On the other hand, it's much less frightening than Metacock, for instance, so it's probably a good place to start these things before uh, really applying them to very uh, large and difficult uh, formalizations. So yeah, that's, that's all for me. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd be happy to take questions. All right, any questions? Okay, uh, Ralph and then uh, Phil. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, so I'm wondering, as you are extending this towards more and more powerful type theories, and eventually, like, Gödel comes and says, you have to stop, but, like, is there, is there some reasonably simple thing you could add to PQuick or to the full cock type theory that would be like, Cock plus that axiom can prove normalization of cock or something like that. Like you just add one inaccessible cardinal or whatever the type theory equivalent of that is or something. This one. Is this one. Yes. So I think uh, the ideal thing, and which is basically what we're doing here already, is to have this kind of universe level difference. So here, basically, our object theory has like one universe. And I think with the meta theory, it's not very easy to exactly quantify this in cock. But we think we're using six universe levels in the meta theory. Probably could be tuned down a little bit further, but it's already kind of messy. But I think that's, that's kind of the, the ideal, is to have this just like universe level difference. And I think that's kind of, a, kind of the equivalent of large cardinal axioms in set theory. So I think that's the kind of natural way of, of, of doing these things. Um, it's unclear how to scale these things to like in predicative universes or even just like a full hierarchy of universes because like in this kind of things you have just one universe. There's a lot of artifacts coming from the fact that you have like these top level thing that don't have a type themselves. So it's much e nicer to have like a full hierarchy. But then if you have a full hierarchy, like what do you put above it? Agda has this like set omega thing and then omega plus one. Maybe that would be a way of, of doing this. Uh, I don't really know, but I think that's kind of the... the most uh, natural direction is, is these, these universe levels, yeah. Thanks. All right, Phil. Thank you for the nice talk. So there's this um, standard tension or discussion, do you formulate things with extrinsic types or intrinsic types? We're simply typed out into calculus. I was surprised to discover when I wrote my textbook, it's a lot more compact if you do it uh, intrinsically about the golden ratio better in terms of lines of code. But it's not clear at all what happens when you go to things like um, formalizing a dependent type theory. I'm guessing you did it extrinsically, because doing it intrinsically seems, in a way that you can actually run it, yeah. so, um, so there's, seems there's, to be an unsolved problem. Yeah, so there's, there's quite a lot of, of work by people like uh, Ambrush Kaposi or um, Torsten Aldenkirch on having these uh, QIITs, these quotient inductive inductive types, which is basically like the amount of fancy induction that you need to be able to express this uh, intrinsically, uh, like intrinsic dependent type theory. So induction and deduction is because you need to mutually define the, the judgment for types and for terms at the same time. So you have one judgment that's indexed over the other. And then the quotient part is to be able to quotient by conversion while you're doing this whole thing. Uh, and again, these very fancy induction principles, they exist in ACTA, although the support is, well, exists. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the nothing like this exists in Cox. We, we went with the kind of the, the, the baseline of, of having everything extrinsically. But I think that's an interesting question to explore uh, how much of these things could be done in, uh, in an in a more intrinsic way. I think one, one important thing to note here is that if you, do the, if you go this QIIT way, you quotient in a very brutal way by conversion. And here we're very interested about uh, understanding what's happening under this quotient, of having different ways of presenting this quotient and so on. And I think this is quite difficult if you brutally identify these things, because then the type theory, everything is equal from the point of view of the type theory. Uh, and so you can't, it's, I think it's much harder to think of what's happening under the quotient if you have done the quotients. So I think for these kind of applications, it's actually not a good idea to quotient. It's probably better to keep this as a judgment that we then want to, to manipulate. But uh, maybe I'm wrong and maybe further developments would maybe uh, move more towards um, intrinsic typing. And, and maybe another thing is there is kind of an intermediate between going fully intrinsically well-typed is using intrinsically just well-scoped syntax. 
And that's something that Autosubst, uh, for instance, has support for. We also didn't go for this, uh, but this might be uh, an interesting trade-off point in the, in, the, in the spectrum that would be more manageable because it's still very simply typed and so you don't get into the whole like, UIIT mess and still you get some benefits from it. Uh, I don't know, it's something to explore. Thanks. All right, well, thank you. Uh, and I think uh, with that, uh, I'll close the session. You can uh, talk to Mevin uh, during the coffee break. Um, and I'll hope to see you uh, for the, the next session at, what is it, 11. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>